Now let's do this example of a convolution. So on the left we have a function which involves two step functions, one minus the other, and on the right an exponential multiplied by a step function. So I like to plot them out to remind myself what I'm dealing with here. So this is x of t, and this is t, and we've got a step function that starts when the thing in the brackets equals zero, so that means at t equals three. So at t equals three, the step function starts and it has a height of one, uh, and then we subtract a step function which starts when t equals five, so that means this one gets subtracted one off it, and it goes back to zero. So this is the function here, zero everywhere there, zero out here, and between three and five, it equals one. And on this side, we have h of t, and so this is a function multiplied by a step function, so it equals zero on the left-hand side of the axis, and then it's a decaying exponential because it's e to the minus 3t. Okay, these are the two functions. Now, what's our equation for an integral? We might remind ourselves of that. So yt equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of tor times h of t minus tor d tor. So remember, we need to plot both of these functions as a function of tor. Then we multiply them, and then we add up the area. The integral means add up the area under the curves. So what is x tor? Well, it's just x of t, where I replace the t by a tor. So that is x of tor. So x of tor is this function here. So what's this other one? h of t minus tor. Well, it's just h of t, where you replace the t by t minus tor. So that equals e to the minus 3 of t minus tor times u of t minus tor. And let's plot that function. And we're going to plot it underneath x of tor because we need to multiply them together. So we plot it here, and we're going to plot it as a function of tor. So this is h of t minus tor. Now we need to do it for a value of t, and then we'll end up having to do it for all values of t because we need to work out the answer here for all values of t. So let's pick a value of t. I'm going to pick it here, for example. Let's pick that value of t. And so, where, how do we plot h of t minus tor? Well, when the thing in the brackets equals zero, that's when this interesting part of the graph is. So what happens over here? t minus tor equals zero, so that means the value of tor that equals t. So at this point here, when tor equals t, we're going to have that part of the graph. Now let's test another point over here. When Let's say when t the thing in the brackets equals one. So the thing in the brackets equals one, we'll have that part of the graph. So the thing in the brackets is ht minus tor. When that equals 1, we're going to have that part of the graph. So what value of tor is that? t minus tor equals 1 means tor equals t minus 1. So that's over here because that's t, the value of tor that equals t minus 1 equals there. So the curve is going to be like this. Okay, so this is our plot here of h of t minus tor. We're going to multiply these two together. This is what the equation says. Multiply them together and then take the area. So if I multiply the two for the value of t I've drawn, if we multiply those two together, we'll get zero for all values of tor, because this doesn't equal zero when that does, and this doesn't equal zero when that does. So we're gonna get, for this value of t, we're gonna get a zero for our convolution. Okay, so our convolution equals zero for all, you can see, for all values of t, certainly for all values of t on the left-hand side of this axis, actually, of course, for all values of t up to 3. So for all values of t less than 3, it's going to equal 0. Okay, so if we draw now the value of t, so we'll pick another value of t, we know what it is, 0 if t is less than 3. So when t is a bit above 3, the graph will look like this. So if this is a value of t, if this, for this value of t, then it's going to be above 3, and then this part of the graph, when we multiply these two together, this part of the graph will be multiplied by 0, and this part of the graph up here will be multiplied by 0 from down here. And the only part that's not 0 is this part of the graph here, above 3 and less than t. And it's going to be multiplied by 1 
times this. Okay, so in that region there, and, and this will be the case for all the way up until t equals 5. So between t equals 3 and t equals 5, we're going to have, we're going to have to work out this integral. So let's work out that integral. Be the integral from 3 up to t, because it's going to be 0 all the way here. That doesn't, we've moved this, we're looking at this value of t now. So it equals 0 all the way up to 3, then it equals this curve then from t on it equals zero. So we only need to, inter to integrate from negative infinity to infinity is the same as integrating between three and t because it's zero everywhere else. So this is between three and t and we're going to multiply those two. So what we? we've got a height of one here. So x of tor equals one and h of t minus tor, well this is this function, so let's write it out. e of minus three times t minus tor and then the u of t minus tor equals 1, so it equals 1 in that whole region. So we've got to do this integral. Okay, and doing an integral of an exponential, we can see here, well, let me, let me do every step. So 3 to t, this is going to be e to the minus 3t times e to the 3 tor, d tor. And th this is not a function of tor, so this is a constant, comes out the front. So we've got e to the minus 3t out the front of the integral of this, and this is going to be 1 third e to the 3 tor evaluated between tor equals 3 and tor equals t. Okay, so this equals a third e to the minus 3t uh, times this one here, so it's e to the 3t minus e, and we're going to put tor equals 3, so e to the 9. Okay, so this equals a third e to the 3 minus t times e to the 3t equals 1. And then we've got minus e to the 3, so e to the minus 3t plus 9. Okay, uh, so this is also equal to, you could write this also as one third of 1 minus e to the minus 3 outside of t minus 3. Okay, so that is the function now that exists here for the value of 3 between t between 3 and 5. Okay, between 3 and 5. Now we've got to work out what the value is going to be for t bigger than 5. So when t is bigger than 5, we look back at these plots here, when t is bigger than 5, we, this plot here now exists over here. So it's going to be up there. We're looking at t there. It's bigger than 5. And we remind ourselves that everything less than 3 gets multiplied by 0. Everything bigger than 5 gets multiplied by 0. So all we've got is this curve here between 3 and 5. So it's the same integral as we had over here, except the limits are between 3 and 5, instead of between 3 and t. And this is the case for all values of t bigger than 5. You can see that the tail of this exponential will be between 3 and 5 for all the values of t that are bigger than 5. So then it's the same integral, except the t here is replaced by a 5, we're doing between 3 and 5, for this value of t. And so this will be the same here, between 3 and 5. This is the same here, except instead of putting in here t, we're putting in 5. So this is instead of 3 times t, that's 3 times 5. So that becomes 15. So that will be a 15 in there. And then this will be 3 e to the minus 3t uh, plus 15. And otherwise the right-hand side term is the same. And you can work that out and work that down and find out that this thing here equals 1 third e to the minus 3t times e to the 15 minus e to the 9. And you could leave it like that or you could manipulate this uh, to collect the terms. You could find that this is 1 minus e to the minus 6 with a third out the front times e to the minus 3 of t minus 5, if you wanted to collect the terms like that. So this function, now the answer, has 
the value of naught for values of t less than 3. It has this function we worked out here for values of t between 3 and 5, and it has this function here for values of t bigger than 5.